Welcome to the Lucky Penny Wallet class. For this project, you'll need to choose a fabric that doesn't fray, such as cork fabric, faux leather, vinyl, craftex, or leather. The entire project will be left raw edge and there's no lining, so it's important to choose one of these types of fabrics. Included in the pattern are pattern pieces that you'll need to use to cut out your fabric. Simply trace the pattern pieces onto your fabric and cut out the shapes you need. I've also created SVG files if you want to cut the pieces out on a digital cutting machine, such as a Brother Scan and Cut or a Silhouette. If you want everything pre-cut for you, we have pre-cut kits available on our website. I'm going to use one of our pre-cut kits, so all of my pieces have been laser cut to the exact shape and size I need. I'm using our navy pebble faux leather. The pieces you need are one inner panel, one outer panel, one card slot B, two card slots A, one ID pocket, and one strap. The wallet can be made as is with the strap closure, or you can add a metal closure. I've included bonus instructions on how to add a flip lock closure. If you wish to add this type of hardware, you'll want to read over the bonus instructions first. I've also included bonus instructions for adding a magnetic snap closure. Again, you'll want to read over those instructions before starting. In this video, I'll show you how to do all three closure options. Once all of your pieces are cut out, let's get started sewing! If you're going to install the strap closure as included in the pattern, then you'll jump right into the instructions. If you'd like to add a flip lock closure, then first you're going to start by poking the prongs of the flip unit through the washer to see which holes the prongs poke through. Make a mental note of which holes. Then with the outer panel wrong side up, center the bottom edge of the washer 1 and 3 8 inches up from the bottom straight edge. Mark where the prongs poked through. Use a seam ripper to cut a slit at each mark. Poke the prongs through your fabric from the right side to the wrong side. Place the washer over the prongs and bend the prongs away from the center to secure the hardware in place. Next, we're going to cover up the wrong side of the hardware. Ideally, it would be best if you had a scrap of your fabric that was 3 inches wide and 2 inches high. Otherwise, you can take your strap piece that you're not going to use since we're installing a flip lock and cut a piece that's generously wider than the back side of the hardware. With wrong sides together, cover the back side of the hardware with your scrap. You can use some adhesive spray to hold the fabric in place, or you could use some double-sided basting tape. You could also use hot glue or a permanent glue if you prefer not to stitch this down. Otherwise, you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and top stitch an eighth inch from each edge of the scrap to enclose the wrong side of the hardware. Just be cautious of your hardware and the washer as you sew. I like to use a narrow foot or a zipper foot when I attach this so I can stitch right along the very edge of my scrap. At the end of your stitching, you can back stitch or leave a long tail and tie the threads off. Once that is done, then you'll follow all the instructions in the pattern except for the section, prepare the outer panel. Again, if you decided to use the strap closure instructions included in the pattern, or install the flip lock, then you're going to skip ahead to the next section in the video. If you'd like to install a magnetic snap closure, then you're in the right place. We're going to start by subcutting our strap into two 7 8 inch by 1 and a half inch pieces. With the outer panel wrong side up, center the bottom edge of the washer an inch and a half up from the bottom straight edge. Mark both vertical slits. Then use a seam ripper to cut a slit at each mark. Poke the prongs through your fabric from the right side to the wrong side and place the washer over the prongs. Bend the prongs away from the center to secure the hardware in place. With wrong sides together, cover the back side of the hardware with one of those scrap pieces of cork we cut. You can use hot glue or permanent glue to hold the cork in place and enclose the wrong side of the hardware. If you really wanted to, you can sew the scrap of fabric down but gluing will look a lot cleaner from the outside and it's a very tight area to sew 
and you wouldn't want to risk hitting the washer or your hardware. Next, with the inner panel wrong side up, center the top edge of the washer three quarters of an inch down from the top curved edge. Mark both vertical slits, then use a seam ripper to cut a slit at each mark. Poke the prongs through your fabric from the right side to the wrong side. Place the washer over the prongs and bend the prongs away from the center to secure the hardware in place. Then you'll repeat just as before to glue the scrap of fabric in place and enclose the wrong side of the hardware. Now that your magnetic snap is installed, you can follow all the instructions in the pattern except the section prepare the outer panel. Start by top stitching an eighth inch from the edge around both rectangles on the inner panel. This will add detail and help prevent stretching from use. Then top stitch an eighth inch from the top edge of the ID pocket, card slot A1, card slot A2, and card slot B. With right sides up, position the bottom edge of card slot A1 along the placement line on the inner panel. The placement line is about one inch up from the bottom straight edge. Make sure the side edges of card slot A1 are even with the side edges of the inner panel. Then top stitch an eighth inch from the bottom edge of card slot A1 to secure in place. With right sides up, position the bottom edge of card slot A2 along the placement line on the inner panel. The placement line is about a half inch up from the bottom straight edge. Make sure the side edges are even. The top corners of the card slots should be nested together. Stitch an eighth inch from the bottom edge of card slot A2 to secure in place. With right sides up, position card slot B on the inner panel aligning the sides and bottom edges. Use sewing clips to hold in place. Stitch a vertical line up the center of the card slots starting at the bottom edge and you can stop at either the rectangle opening or you can stop at the top of the slots. Then you'll pivot to sew back down for reinforcement. The ID pocket should be centered about a quarter inch up from the lower opening. You can use double-sided basting tape to adhere it in place. Simply apply it to the wrong side along the sides and the bottom edge to hold it in place, or you could use paper tape. I'm just going to hold mine in place. Next, stitch an eighth inch from the sides and bottom edge to secure it in place. Set the prepared inner panel aside for the moment. Skip to the next section of the video if you added a flip lock or a magnetic snap closure. First, you're going to start by top stitching an eighth inch from each length side edge of the strap. With right sides up, position the strap on the outer panel between the placement lines and clip in place. Now we're on to the final assembly. Layer the prepared inner panel and outer panel wrong sides together and align all edges as even as possible. Clip all the layers in place. The more clips, the better. Remember your outer panel may look a little different depending on which type of closure you chose to add. Make sure to clip the top corners of the pockets. Top stitch an eighth inch from the edge around the entire wallet panel. Try using a Teflon foot for an even top stitch. Trim any slivers of excess fabric from the outer edge if your fabric shifted a bit. You don't need to finish off the raw edges because the edges won't fray, but if you'd like, you can use an edge coat paint or a sealant for a more professional look. If you did purchase a laser cut kit from our website, the edges will already be sealed from the laser. If you chose to add the strap closure or the magnetic snap closure, then your wallet is complete. If you chose to add a flip lock, we have one more step in the instructions to do. After your wallet is completely sewn, unscrew the screws from the remaining piece of hardware to separate the face plate from the back plate. Center the bottom edge of the back plate three quarters of an inch up from the flap edge. Mark the screw holes and the opening. 
Next, draw an oval around all three markings, only slightly larger. I'm going to use a permanent pen because this won't be seen later on and will be covered up by the hardware. Then you're going to cut out the oval. Take your faceplate and test to see how the three holes fit inside the oval. It should be a snug, tight fit. If you can't see the three holes of the faceplate completely, then cut more away. Then, with wrong sides together, position the face plate over the oval against the outer panel and the back plate over the oval against the inner panel. Screw the hardware together. And that's it! You're finished! Share photos of your completed project using hashtag SallyTomato and hashtag LuckyPennyWallet. We'd love to see your projects in our Facebook group, on Instagram, and other social sites. I hope you enjoyed this pattern. Thanks so much for watching.